Hello friends, my name is Sunil Ranjan and I am an English teacher. Now here I have come up with intentional fallacy that is a term related to English literature. Well, here I begin. The theory of intentional fallacy along with effective fallacy was published in the book Verbal Icon which Wimsot wrote with Munro Bedsley. It codifies the crucial theory of new critical and formal practice by making both these theories very important to 20th century criticism. William K. Wimsot was an American literary theorist and professor. Along with Bedsley, he wrote the book The Verbal Icon in 1954. In his book, Wimsot brought out the idea of intentional fallacy in which he writes that intentional fallacy refers to the error of evaluating a work by the intention of an author. It is based upon a rejection of the author everywhere in the text. It argues that an author's intention or design should not influence the reading of a text. It further argues that a work of art should not be evaluated through what the author has intended for the same. The implication is the evaluation of a text is independent of the author's intent. It also means that the act of reading is an autonomous activity which is not controlled by the author's intent. According to Wimsot, the internal fallacy derives from confusion between the poem and its sources. Essentially, it occurs when a critic puts too much emphasis on personal, biographical, genetic or what he calls external information when analyzing a work. Wimsot and Bethsley consider this strategy a fallacy partly because it is impossible to determine the intention of the author. As often authors themselves are unable to determine the intention of a poem and partly because the poem as an act that takes place between a poet and an audience may have an, as an existence outside of both. Thus, its meaning cannot be evaluated simply based on the intentions of or the effect on either the writer or the audience. For Wimsot and Bethsley, intentional criticism becomes subjective criticism and so ceases to be criticism at all. For them, critical inquiries are resolved through evidence in and out of the text. So the act of reading becomes an aesthetic, self-serving function which is not influenced by external factors such as author's biography. Intentional fallacy tells that the relationship between a text and its audience is independent of the author's presence. It liberates the act of readership from the presence of the author. So friends, here I come to the end of this topic, intentional fallacy, and uh, I use plain language so that you understand, understand it very well. And uh, if you subscribe to my channel, I promise that I'll be coming up with fine, quali fine and quality videos for you from time to time. Thank you.